just a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as The Six Shooter, just one of the many fine programs brought to you Sundays on NBC. Later this evening, listen to the NBC Star Playhouse with two of your favorite stars. Hear Stroke of Fate and the story of what might have happened if fate had reversed historical facts. And be sure to keep tuned for the dramatic story of The Last Man Out. It's a wonderful lineup of great programs, all of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the Six Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl, its handle unmarked. People call them both the Six Shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as The Six Shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still remembered legends. <laughs> Uh, I asked you if it was short enough for you. Well, give me the mirror so as I can take a look. Uh, there you are. Well? Don't look to me like you cut it at all. Oh, now, Al. Well, it's still there, ain't it? Hanging down the back of my neck. Well, I figured you'd want to be in style. Fellows in just the other day, come from Kansas City. Said that's the way all Easterners are having a haircut. Well, I ain't no Easterner, and I don't aim to be spending a quarter every week for a shave and a haircut, so start slicing it off. Okay, okay. I need to get your head up. Oh, sorry, Breezy. I I reckon I ain't feeling up to snuff today. I can't say as I blame you. I heard about the town meeting last night. Yeah. You uh, told him yet? I don't see why everybody's in such a rush all of a sudden. You waited 40 years, a couple more hours ain't gonna make no difference. You're, uh, gonna do it today then, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna do it today. Eh, mm, poor old Gabe. Wonder how he'll take it. I'm sure glad it ain't me that has to break the news. Stop talking about it, Breezy, and finish my hair. Well, Gabe's a sensible man. He's not gonna hold it again, you know, seeing as how the, the whole town's agreed. Well, the whole town don't know him like I do. I was here when he first come to Yellow Crest. I don't know if it wasn't for Gabe Starbuck, there wouldn't be Howdy, any. Howdy, mister. Paul. You're next. It'll be a couple of minutes. Dodge City Papers there if you'd like to read it while you're waiting. Thank you. Hi. Britt. Now you sit still. Britt puns it. Huh? Don't you remember me, Britt? Why, uh, I... Alf? Alf Crandall? Alf? Alf Crandall? Oh. Oh, sure, I remember you. Well, what happened to your beard? Uh, Breezy here shaved it off three years ago. Oh, he did? <laughs> yeah. A couple of the boys paid him to do it while I was asleep in the chair. Is that so? I ain't never forgiven you for that, Breezy. You could have growed it back out. Well, it wouldn't have been the same. It took me 25 years to get that stand of whiskers. Besides, once Maddie seen me without them, <laughs> folks do say I look younger. Well, you look so young, I hardly recognize you. That's... Well, what about you, Brett? How's the world been treating you? Oh, first rate, first rate. You just hit town. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I've been out on the Square Moon Ranch last month or so. I ran into a flock of sheep yesterday, and they gave me such a brotherly look, I decided it's high time I get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Be right pleased to take care of you, Mr. Ponsett. <laughs> yeah, there. That ought to be short enough, Al. Well, feels like you got some of it off anyhow. Uh, just let me give you a little brush. All right, there you go. Oh, thanks. Sit right down, Mr. Pronsett. Uh, well, what'll it be? Shave and a haircut? Ah, uh, haircut will do it. Well, you might as well have a shave, too, as long as you're here. I got the kettle on, the towels will be real hot. Why, you won't even feel the razor. No, no, I don't think so. No I'm matter how good a man is at shaving himself, it's not the same as having a barber do it. Oh, now, no, you take no. having a horse shod. You don't do that yourself unless it's no, an emergency. No, you go to expert. Well, sir, it right, seems to me a man's face ought to be as important as his horse. Yes, but it I, seems I, to me that right. when a fellow wants to get a... <laughs> all right, Brady, I... you can give me a shave, too. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Ponce, yes, sir. I'll just trim some of this hair off while the water's warming up. You gonna be around town for a spell, Britt? Uh, just overnight, Alf. I'm due back to Square Moon tomorrow. 
Well, I'd sure like to stay and chew the fat, but uh, I'm due over to Gabe's Starbucks office. Oh, say, how is he? Hmm? Gabe. Gee, I haven't seen higher in the tail of him. Must be over four years. Oh, that's uh, that's right. You and him used to be real good friends, didn't oh, you? Oh, we sure did. It was Gabe Starbuck gave me my first pony. Well, as a matter of fact, he's he's aging, Brett. He's aging fast. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He, he, he's not down sick. Is no, he? no. No, Gabe wouldn't let himself get down no matter how he felt. Uh-huh. What's he up to nowadays? Oh, same as ever. Well, you, you mean he's still sheriff? Yeah, he's, he's still sheriff. At least he is today. Oh? Truth is, we had a meeting just last night. Decided the town's got to have a new sheriff. And that's what I'm going over to talk to Gabe about now. Uh-huh. You don't want it too short, do you, Mr. Ponce? The fellow was in from Kansas City the other day. Says back there folks ain't cutting their hair so short anymore. Well, he you, says it, you better uh, turn it pretty close, Breezy. I may not be in a barbershop again for quite some time. You know? uh, whatever you say. It appears to me people around here don't want to be in style. Nobody wants to get rid of old Gabe, Britt. But the town's changed. Well, we got near 700 people living here now. That many? Yeah, there's a new bank, too. Maybe you saw Yes, I did, yes. Not doing very good, though. Folks are afraid their money won't be safe. Oh, we haven't had any robberies, not for quite a spell. But as long as Gabe's sheriff, well, there's not much he could do to stop an outlaw if one did happen to come our way. You know, old Gabe being so old and all. Mm-hmm, yeah. Doggone it, Britt. We all realize that we owe him an awful lot. Cleaned up Yellowcrest. Made it possible for decent people to live here. Of course, that was 40 years ago. Things are a lot different now. We, uh... We gotta have us a new sheriff, that's all. Mm-hmm. Does Gabe know you're planning on replacing him? No, I don't know. He told him yet, but... I can't put it off much longer. I see. It's gonna hurt him pretty bad, isn't it? Well, how would you feel if it was your place, he... You give your life to a town, your whole life, and they say, we're, we're sorry, but we got to put you out to pasture. You're too old. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe maybe if he was to have a deputy. Well, we talked about that. Town ain't rich enough to afford two salaries. Mm-hmm. Well, Gabe's got a good, sensible head on his shoulders. He... That's what I said, Mr. Fawcett. That's just what I said. He probably won't like the idea of losing his job, not at first, but... He'll, he'll see that you don't have much choice in the thing. Now, you just lean back. That's better. And be sure and tell me if this towel's too hot. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. A little warm? Mm. I guess I can stand it. Real glad you don't think we're being too hard on Gabe, Brett. Mm. Mm. Say, that gives me an idea. Mm. Well, mm. Uh, seeing as how you understand the predicament we're in, uh, about Gabe, I mean... Maybe you wouldn't mind sort of preparing him? No, 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 wait, wait, wait just a minute, Alf. I, 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 oh, I now, your old friend, you said so yourself. It, it'll be different having the news come from you. No, it's none of my concern. Uh, here's another towel, Mr. Ponsett. Now, just lean back. You're going to be seeing him anyway, Brett. Hmm? Now, all you have to do is kind of lead the conversation around to him retiring, you know, lay the foundation, and, and then later on, when everything's getting... I won't do it, Al. I won't do it. Now, you're just wasting your breath. You just... How in thunder am I going to get this lather on, Mr. Ponsett, if you keep moving around like I'm that? I'm only asking you to talk to Gabe because, well, I am have to say the wrong thing. You know me, Brett, always putting my foot in my mouth. And I hold still. Uh, now, Al, I tell you, you're you're not going to put... Ouch, ouch. Oh, you, your own fault, Mr. Ponsett, and I told you to keep quiet. Please, he's right. Just just sort of take it easy, Britt, while I sort of explain what I had in mind. And then if you still aren't willing... Well, between the shaving and the hot towels and Al harping at me, well, I... Not that I agreed to tell Gabe that Tom was getting a new sheriff. I, I didn't agree to that, mind you, but... All I said was that I, I'd sort of feel him out and uh, see how the land was lying. Anyway, about 20 minutes later, I was coming along the boardwalk heading for Gabe's office. Huh. Well, it sure sounded like shooting to me. When I looked around, nobody seemed to be paying any attention. Listen to that. The fellows arguing politics over the post office steps. They didn't even stop to take a breath. And the ladies in Johnson's Mercantile, they went right on measuring yardage like they hadn't even heard it. Uh-huh. 
Well, I was pretty sure where it was coming from now. I was right behind the sheriff's office. Uh, opened the front door. No sign of Gabe. No sign of anybody, for that matter. And, oh, oh, then I saw him. Right through the back window. And I saw why folks hadn't been very upset about the gunfire. Gabe was having himself a little target practice out there. Aiming at a tin can sitting on a pile of lumber. It had just been four years since I'd seen him last, but... Oh, he looked good ten years older. Smaller, too. He kind of shrunk and bent over with thin yellow-gray hair and long, bony arms that didn't seem to have much meat on them. Yeah. He sure wasn't having much luck hitting that tin can, either. Hello, Gabe. Hmm? Who... No, it's Brett. Brett Ponson. Well, I'll be doggone. Well, it's sure good to see you. Yeah, for a second there, I didn't recognize you. His son got my eyes. I blinded me, son. Sure. Uh, how are you, Gabe? Well, never better. Never felt better in my life. Glad to hear it. Well, I, I was just, um, just doing a little shooting. Yeah, yeah, I saw you. Oh, not that I need any practice, you understand, Britt. I... I was worried about one of my guns. I, I think he throws a little to the left. I say. Uh... Yeah, yeah, that's why I missed my last shot. Uh, um, <clears throat> I guess you saw me miss it. Oh, well, boy, a man can't hit anything if his gun's not working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go inside where we can sit down and have us talk. Fine, fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're looking good, Britt. Real good. Oh, well, a little older, maybe. But I guess that happens to all of us, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Man's only as old as he feels. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, just take that chair, Britt, over there. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Hey, I'll sit by the window here, where I can keep an eye out on the street. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I was kind of surprised to hear that you're still sheriff, Gabe. Huh. Don't see why I should have surprised you. Well, you know, oh, you, you, you must be getting along, Gabe. Well, I'm 64, Britt. 64 last spring. Now, uh, now, uh, Gabe. Well... Might be 65. The family never kept no records. But I ain't no, no older than that. Uh, no. Don't look no older. No, no. Do I? Oh, no. No, no. no. Huh. You, uh, you still living alone? Well, of course I'm still living alone. You think I need a keeper or something? Oh, no. I, I was just wondering if you ever got a hold of that ranch you used to talk about. That's all. You remember? Ranch? Yeah, don't you remember that? When I was a kid, you always said someday you're going to have a ranch. After you'd retired from being sheriff, of course. Oh, oh, I still aim to do it. When the time comes, of course, there ain't no sense in thinking about it now. Oh? No, no. Yellowcrest is growing, but growing fast. That's when the town needs law and order the most. When it's busting its britches. And seeing as how I'm the only experienced lawman in these parts, well, it's my duty to stay on the job. I owe it to the folks here. Why, if I was even to think about retiring... Well, they just wouldn't know what to do. They'd be plumb helpless. Well, I ain't got no choice, Britt. You know how it is. Sure, sure, Gabe. I, uh... Yeah, I, I know. We'll return to James Stewart as the six-shooter in just a moment. The winter brings extra hazards to the motorist and the pedestrian. Longer hours of darkness, poor visibility caused by snow, rain and fog, and slippery streets call for extra caution. The National Safety Council urges that for safety, every motorist should always adjust speed to road and weather conditions. Keep the windshield clear. Never slam on your brakes if the road is wet or slippery. Pump them slowly to slow down or stop. Use tire chains on snow and ice. And keep a safe distance between your car and the one ahead. Guard against that one accident that might take your life or ruin it. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. <laughs> Well, 
We had a long talk, Gabe and me, sitting there in the office watching the wagons creak along outside the window. I, I guess we've about covered everything. Folks we'd known old times. The only thing we didn't discuss was Gabe's retiring from sheriff. Anyhow, after I left him, I had supper and took a little stroll. Oh, it must have been about nine o'clock when I got settled down for the night in my room in the Parker Hotel. The bed was real comfortable, a lot softer than those bunks out of Square Moon Ranch. Maybe that's why I had so much trouble dropping off to sleep. Yeah? Yeah, who is it? Alf Crandall. You sleep, Brent? Oh, no, no. Come on in, Al. Oh, come on in, Al. I'll just get this lamp turned up here. There we are. I didn't mean to wake you. Ned Parker told me you only turned in a few minutes ago. Yeah, I'll pull up the chair. Yeah, thanks. You know, I was looking for you this evening after supper. Well, I went for a walk. Oh? You were right, Alf. Yellow Crest sure has changed. That's a fine new church going up there by the creek. Uh, yeah. Well, what I wanted to find out a bit was uh, whether you talked to Lots of new Gabe buildings about... over south, too. Mighty fancy houses. Some of them look like they're going to be two stories high over right. there. Yeah? How'd he take it? Why, uh, how did he take what? Uh, oh, you mean Gabe? Well, who else would I mean? Well? Well, I didn't tell him, Alf. Huh? I told you I couldn't do it. I, well, when I, I, I just couldn't do it. I don't blame you, Britt. I shouldn't have asked you in the first place. It was my job. I did kind of hint around once or twice, but I could see what it did to him. I just, just the idea of not being sheriff anymore. It's, it's all he's got, Alf. He doesn't have a family and kids to worry about. Gave to the sheriff a yellow crest, and if he ever stops being the sheriff, he, he won't be anything. I know, Britt. I know, but what can we... What? What's that? The, the alarm bell. Must be a fire, I reckon. There's Mark Fawcett running down the street there. He'll know. Oh, on his window. Stuck tighter. Mark! Mark, up here, Mark! What are they ringing the bell for? Somebody robbed the bank! The bank? We're meeting over at the sheriff's office. Well, I guess it was bound to happen sooner or later, Britt. Yeah. Hand me my pants, will you? <laughs> Bell was still ringing when Alf and I rode up to Gabe's office. Everybody in town was heard of by now. There were 10 or 12 men standing around the streets, others coming up from all directions. Gabe was standing right by his horse, right in the middle of things, taking charge. Well, there wasn't much doubt about it. He was still sheriff of Yellow Crest. Uh, you boys know Britt Ponson, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, what, what happened, Gabe? Well, it was just an accident. I seen him. An accident, pure and simple. They was riding out of the alley from behind the bank, giving the horses a spur. Couldn't get a look at their faces, but the way they was riding, that made me suspicious. Uh-huh. So I thought maybe I ought to see if everything was all right at the bank. Went around to check. Back door was broke open, wide open. People are scattered around inside. Uh, Jim Waterby's over there now, trying to find out how much they took. You didn't try to follow them, the outlaws. Well, they was gone before I knew they was outlaws. Uh, before I knew for certain, that is. Yeah. But uh, I seen which way they're headed. East. Oh, 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 that don't make east. sense, Jay. They'd have to cross the salt flats if they went east. Sure they were. Sure. That's the way they went. Right toward the flats. Well, you must have been a seeing things. Man to be a fool to strike out that way. <laughs> 200 miles without a water hole. Oh, I bet you turned off, went up in them hills. Well, I'm the one who seen them, ain't I? Yeah. $2,500, Gabe. That's what they stole. Oh, that's so, Jim. A sack of gold and a sack of currency. Yeah. 2500 as close as I can figure it. Well, boys, let's see if we can pick up the trail. Easy, Mr. Easy. Who uh, They'll determine to chase him out onto them flats. Yeah, right? we want to catch him, don't we? Uh, if we do, we got to use our heads, Gabe. Men smart enough to rob that bank ain't going to take a chance on but... dying out there in that salt. They'd go for the hills. Mark yeah, is right, Gabe. Yeah. You tell me I can't believe my own eyes. Well, it was pretty dark. Maybe you got confused. Maybe it looked like they was heading east. Now, we're only wasting time arguing with him. Let's go. Yeah. I'm the sheriff of Yellow Crest. I'm running this posse, ain't I? Gabe, we're, uh, we're riding toward the ridge. All right. Come on, Rusty. Come on. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Gabe. You can't stop him, Brett. 
When he gets his mindset, nobody can stop him. I guess this just proves we was right about Gabe. He ain't up to the job of being sheriff no more. Yeah, I guess you're right, sure. Okay, boys, I'll lead the way. Yeah. Hey, come on. This no, you've got enough man without me. Search yourself. I watched them wind along toward the rise of the purple hills west of town. After a couple of minutes, the night swallowed them up, and the hoofbeats trickled off into silence. All right, Scar, come on. I turned Scar east. It wasn't like Gabe to be stubborn about something as important as a bank robbery. Oh, I'll grant you, it didn't seem very sensible for a couple of bandits to take off across the salt flats. And Gabe's eyesight wasn't what it had been once, of course, but I just couldn't believe he'd he'd be dead wrong. And Scar threw up his head when the smell of salt hit his nose. <laughs> he sure didn't like the idea of walking out into it. Easy, boy. Easy now. Easy now. We're not going very far. Come on. Come on now. Nothing but white, as far as you could see. Stretch out taunt like a cavalry blanket white salt picking up the moonlight and bouncing along ahead of us. The funny thing, though, there there was only one set of hoof prints out there on the flats. Well, about ten minutes later, I spotted Gabe. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Whoa, boy. He wasn't riding very fast, so I slowed up. I figured it was just as well Gabe didn't see me. I, I didn't want him to think that I'd tagged along because I was worried about him, you know. And then the darndest thing happened. He swung his horse around and started backtracking. Here, boy. Here, boy. Come on. I eased Scar over behind a couple of gray boulders so we'd be out of sight. And Gabe came right toward us. At first, I thought he knew where we were. Then he turned his horse again and walked him out in the salt. And for a couple of minutes, I couldn't figure out what he was up to. It seemed to me like he was just wandering around, no purpose at all. And then the next thing that happened, it was even stranger yet. Gabe jerked his gun out of his horse and he began firing. <laughs> He wasn't aiming at anything. He, he, as far as I could see, he was just shooting up into the sky. Yeah, he left off two or three more shots and then wheeled around and galloped past me on, on his way back to town. And I saw him reach in his saddlebags and bring out a couple of cloth sacks and hook them over his saddle horn. They were the kind of sacks banks used for carrying money. Yeah. Well, there just wasn't any doubt about it now. The story of that bank robbery was something Gabe had made up out of whole cloth. Oh, somebody had broken into the bank, all right. Well, it wasn't an outlaw, though. It was Gabe. <sighs> well, well I, I waited on maybe 15 minutes. And then I, I heard the alarm bell start off again. Posse would pull up in front of Gabe's office. Bell must have brought him out of the hills. Gabe was handing the cloth sacks to Jim Waterby. I pulled up just in time to hear the tail end of what he was saying. I ain't sure I hit him, you understand. This gun of mine's been thrown a bit to the left lately. But when I started shooting, they dropped these here bags and went galloping off. By the time I stopped to pick up the money, I reckon that's what's in them. Well, them outlaws was just plumb out of sight. Yes, sir. I figure there wasn't much need of chasing them no further. Like as not, they'll never make it cross us all anyway. Now, you did right, Gabe. Yeah. And it looks like it's all here. Every cent. Hey, Britt! Britt, you hear what happened? Gabe caught up with a bandit, shot it out with him, and brung back what they stole. Did he? Yeah. Uh, that don't seem possible. Them having a head start and all. Well, you know Rusty when I give him his head. Well, maybe the bandits was lost. Maybe they didn't know about them flats. Yeah, I reckon they didn't. I reckon that's it. Uh, if they knew where the bank was, they'd know about that salt. Oh, that's yeah, right. that's right. Uh, what are you getting at, Mark? I don't know. There's something funny about this. There's two of them, you said, huh? Yeah, that's right. Two of them against you? Well, what's so funny about that? Many's the time I shot it out with more than two men. That's right out there, boys, and have a look around. Well, whatever you say, Mark. Sure. Uh, 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 hold on a minute. I think maybe I can save you a trip. Uh, uh Yeah, the, the fact is, I was following Gabe. Oh, yeah, I, I followed him right on, out on the flats. And... What? Oh, I, I know you didn't see me, Gabe. I was behind you, but I could see you just plain as day. Now, now, now Britt, uh, you got to let me... You mean you've seen the gunfight, too? Uh, listen yeah. to me, Britt, listen to me. Uh, was he telling the truth, Britt? Yeah, that's right, was he? Well, 
I'll tell you one thing. I never saw a fight like that before in my whole life. Well, yeah. uh, what about the bandits, Britt? You, you get a chance to recognize them? No, no, no. I'm afraid I didn't. You didn't stick around, eh? Once Gabe started shooting? No, no. I, uh... Well, as a matter of fact, when Gabe was through shooting, well, it was like they hadn't even been there. No. I'll be, I'll be darned. Mm-hmm. That's... That's what it was, all right. Just like they hadn't been there at all. I don't know how Gabe had found out that the town was talking about having a new sheriff. I guess he sort of sensed it, the way folks have been acting. Of course, after this, this hold-up, well, they figured out maybe they could afford giving him a deputy. Jim Waterby, that, that's the banker, he put up part of the money, and then they, they didn't have much trouble raising the rest. I had a little talk with Gabe just before I left town. We, we didn't mention that night out on the flats, neither one of us. But he, he did give me his word that the next time there's any trouble, well, he, he'd, uh, he'd let his deputy do a good share of the taking care of it. But the, the way things worked out, though, there haven't been any more robbers in Yellow Crest. Not one single solitary robbery. They, they say it's because the sheriff gave. Outlaws just don't want to tangle with him. They all must have heard about what happened that time a couple of them tried to hold up the Yellow Crest Bank. I wonder if you really know how much good you're doing every time you buy Christmas seals. Well, let me tell you something. Something I think will amaze you. It's simply this. Over six million lives have been saved in the fight against tuberculosis since the first Christmas seal was sold. In other words, what you actually buy when you buy Christmas seals is priceless protection for yourself, your family, and your community. So, please answer your Christmas seal letter today. The Six Shooter is an NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burke, and the transcribed story is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Herb Bygren, John Stevenson, Lamont Johnson, Dal McKinnon, and Old Gabe was played by Bill Johnstone. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam. And the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. And now, from all of us who each week bring you the Six Shooter, a special salute to NBC affiliated station WGBF Evansville, Indiana, on the occasion of their 30th anniversary. Happy anniversary, WGBF, and best wishes to all of your listeners. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Tonight, hear Lily Palmer and Rex Harrison in the NBC 